Hey guys, so I have some exciting news. I figured out what was going on with my imports. So if you're experiencing the same thing where you try to auto import something, so here's an example right here. So this is one of our components and I come over here and it gives me this auto completion that I can hit enter on and it gives me this path where it starts off with the package um, and it messes it all up because this is not a valid path for this project and I want it to be a relative import like this. Um, so what I did is I went and did some research and figured out I can make this change to my tsconfig where I change the base URL into paths like this and now what will happen is uh, it'll work and it'll import correctly so if I get rid of this now save it and then, oops, let's give it a second to restart. And then when that reboots and it rereads this tsconfig over here and uses these properties, I was able to get it so it was importing from the right place. And now it has this relative import. So nice. So if you're experiencing the same problem, give this a try. The other thing. This may not work in uh, TS or uh, TypeScript 2.9 because there were some bugs. So the other thing is I'm using TypeScript 3. So I'm using a developer edition. Um, if you just Google TypeScript 3, how to download that, you can download that. Um, and if I come here at the bottom, it's kind of small, but there's your TypeScript version. You can click on that, and here you can uh, pick a different version if you want to. And so I have mine uh, here and also it's in your settings so if you go to preferences settings you can see your tsconfig um, I think mine's at the very bottom yeah let's scroll this over so here I have it pointed at a tsconfig uh, or a typescript sorry library and this typescript library is typescript 3 um, and so now I'm back to normal now I'll probably need to make this change also in the server and also the app as well. So go ahead and do that in all the places that we use it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started working on the form again today. Now I made a few changes, well actually just a small few changes from yesterday. And the first was adding um, labels, so it looks like this. So that's the only thing I added, so I did price, beds, guests, and also longitude and latitude. I added this uh, just so I didn't have to type this all out while you guys were watching because it takes a little bit. Um, but what I did is I imported form from AntDesign and then I just, from page two, I wrapped each one in a form item and gave it a label, right? So that's those three. And then over here on page three did the same thing and got the latitude and longitude. So nice. All right, so the first thing I wanna work on today is getting this button here. Well, not that button. Um, but the button over here, this next button. So I want this over here. Um, and here's, we're gonna have to use some CSS, I think. And here's usually what I do when I need to style stuff in CSS. So I'll open up the inspect window and I'll click this little picker and I'll click on it and I will kind of style it here and then figure out how to get that to work on the app. So I can see right now that the very inside is a button. So here's the HTML over here. I'll look at that. And so there's a span and then outside of span, we can see here's the container it's in. So here's a little trick to push something all the way to the left. I'm gonna say, so here's the container. I'm gonna say display flex. And then here's the child. I'm gonna say margin left and I'm gonna say auto. And so what that does, you can see, it just adds margin to the left and it pushes this guy over. Um, I think another way we could do this is you could say line items, flex end, justify items, flex end, justify content, flex end, there we go. I always forget which one it is. I just usually do this a couple times until it goes over there. So that's another way you can style it to get it to go all the way over there. Um, it's probably better to use the flex one, I'm guessing. I'm not really sure the best practices with CSS, but uh, let's go ahead and add this now to our code. So we see these styles right here are the ones we want to add. So if I come over here to the connector 
and here's the button I care about, the next button. Uh, maybe it's both buttons I want to push to the right. So in that case, I'm going to wrap it with a div. And so this, oops, and this is going to act as our uh, outer container for the button. And then I'm going to set the style. And here we just have to uh, change it a little bit. So these have to be strings. And then the property names are camel cased, like so. All right, give that a save. And now when this refreshes, um, it should be over there. And by the way, whenever you make changes, so uh, if I make changes to this thing, so I have it uh, flexing to the end. If I did flex start, so I've now made a change in this. If I refresh, it cancels any changes you make in the inspector. So that's important to know. All right, so the next thing I want to do is get the input number working. So I haven't worked with this or this select field over here where we use tags. So this is going to be interesting. What we're going to do is we're going to create a custom field, kind of like how we did with the input field. So we're using the field component from Formic, and then we're using it. A, a custom component called input field. So if I click on that, it's in the shared folder. So input field, we're going to create one of these, um, but we're going to change it to a input field or input number. Now I'm wondering if I can just use a variable here. Um, and oh, okay, I didn't realize we were wrapping every single um, input in a form item. Uh, so I actually did this really inefficiently. Uh, so I actually want to do this in a different manner. So I just wrapped all these in a form items. But because I didn't realize that we were actually using a form item here, I'm going to take as a prop a label. And then I'm going to pass the label to this form item here. So label is going to be label. And... Uh, I just have to add this to the props that we can possibly take. So I'm going to say label and that's going to be a string and this is an optional. So now over here I don't have to actually uh, wrap it with something. I can just put the label right on that. Alright, let's see if that renders correctly. And it does, nice. So let's just change those real quick. And uh, same thing here. Oops. So this will just save a little bit of extra uh, rendering. We don't have to do another uh, wrapper around all of them. And same thing with the ones I did over here. All right, nice. So. I'm wondering, we have a single input field here. I'm thinking that this input number works almost exactly the same, except it only takes numbers. So what I'm thinking is we actually just uh, have a prop on here, and then we say whether we want this to be a number or not. And if it's a number, uh, we just use a different component here. So I'm going to say use number component. So this is going to be a prop I add, and this is going to be a boolean. So use number component, and this is going to be a boolean, and this is going to be an optional field. And by default, we're going to say false. And so I'm going to say const um, comp is equal to input, and comp is now what we're rendering. So I haven't changed anything yet, right? I just said input is equal to comp, and now I'm rendering comp. But now I'm going to have a ternary operator that says use number component. And I'm going to copy that. So input number is what we want. So if, they pa if a user passes in the prop use number component, I'm going to now use that. Number input. Oops, what was it? input number. Um, okay, so I want to first make sure we didn't break anything with our other ones. Oh, and we don't need 
to import form on that page anymore. Okay, so I can still type, perfect. So now, on the ones that I want to be numbers, so price guess, I'm gonna say use number component. And there's two ways you can do this. You can say equals true, or you can just do it like that and it'll be true. Now I have a TS lint where it says it recommends like this, so I'm gonna do this version of it. All right, guess as well, and then latitude, longitude. Um, oh, beds as well. All right, so let's see if this works. So if I go over to that next page where we have them, um, we're now using number fields. Let's see if we're able to actually uh, add them. Uh, it looks like something's not quite working. And when I click out of it, so the blur filter, let's see if there's something in the console. The cannot read property type of undefined. So I wonder if there's a field we're supposed to add to this. It doesn't look like there is. Now, okay, here's something I notice. The on change of it takes a value. And so that's different than how the on change works um, with a regular input field. A regular input field, it gets an event. So we're gonna have to change how we do this. So right now I am passing on change um, into this. But we can't really use on change if it is an input number. So I'm gonna have to conditionally put a prop on here. So we're gonna say on change, and we're gonna say use number component. So here we need to have basically our own custom, I guess, way to update it. So in that case, whenever you have to do your own custom update, um, there is from the form a set field value which will allow us to set a field value instead of using the on change that comes with field. I'm also going to destructure the field now. So I'm going to say on change dot 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 field. That way I now am not just spreading the, the on change on this component and then I can use it. So here we're going to say set field value. Otherwise, we're going to do on change. And so this is going to be the new value. And this should be, I guess, a number in this case, but we'll say a string. And the field.name is going to be the first parameter. So how set field value works is you say the name uh, of the the component or the field that you want to update. In this case, it's coming in as a prop, and that's going to be the name that's on the field. And the second is the value, which is going to be new value. All right, so we'll see if that works. Uh, I'm guessing it, see, it doesn't like um, how we're doing this. Probably because it this is not a valid type for the uh, input, but it is a valid type for input number, and it doesn't know which one it is. So I think I'm just going to use any. What if I use any here? OK. Um, I'm not sure if this works. Well, let's go ahead and test it and see. If that doesn't work, we're going to have to do some console logging to see what's going on. So all right, if I increment the number, that looks like it's good. If I click out, the number stays. What if I type a number? Cool. So that looks like it did fix it. So we added a little bit more advanced logic here, but basically we're just conditionally uh, rendering a different component now and conditionally cha uh, changing how we update that, uh, the value. So we're just doing this instead of on change. And we're gonna have to do a similar thing for the next component we want, which is this select field over here. Um, so that's gonna be for this next page. So the amenities, latitude and longitude should work because they're the same thing. And I should be able to do decimals as well for latitude longitude stuff. Now again, the actual form of this, we don't want the user to actually input a latitude or longitude. They should be inputting, um, not that, but uh, like their address, for example. 
but we'll get to that in a future video. Let's go ahead and do the amenities now. Uh, so this is going to be another custom component. So I'm going to create a new one called, um, I guess, tag field is the best way to say it. And I'm going to copy what we are using here. And I'm going to rename it to tag field. And now we're just going to modify this to work with this new component. All right, so it looks like we can take some initial values here and pass them as the children, uh, some options. I'm not really sure what amenities I want as default, so for now I'm gonna just leave that blank and see if I can just render just a regular select field. All right, so this is coming from and design and it's just select. All right, and I think we're just going to be copying what we do here. And I, I'm not really sure what the new value is going to be for this. I'm not sure if this select is going to give us back a uh, array or what, so we're going to have to play with that as well. We want to spread on the values here as well. Now, we're spreading on a property it doesn't look like it likes, so let's see which one it doesn't like. All right, so there's no on blur. So on blur is coming from, I believe this. So I'm just going to ignore that property like so. So now I'm not gonna put the on blur on select. Uh, basically I'm saying this property is unused. So this is a little trick you can do. So I don't want on blur to go on this select. So what I'm doing is I'm destructuring it and I'm saying uh, renaming it to an unused variable basically. All right, so this is our select now. We don't have to conditionally render a component. We can get rid of that. We can get rid of these two. Well, actually, we can still have a label. That's fine. All right, well, let's try this. The placeholder we should get rid of. That should be something the user passes in. Same with the style, but the mode and the on change should be like that. All right, so let's go over to page three. So now our amenities is now going to use that um, tag field. All right, and nice. So we were able to import that automatically. Fine. Um, input's not red, and we can remove these from the top. All right, let's go over there. Um, so there's not not found. That's not a great message to tell the user right as they open it up, but let's see if it works. So pool um, hot tub, and it looks like they work well. Let's see if I create a listing. We can see the amenities are an array of strings, so perfect. Looks like it's working nicely. And can I get rid of them? I can. Perfect. So I'm happy with how this field is functioning now. Looks like it's good. So uh, that's it for this video, guys. What we'll do in the next one is uh, get create listing to actually send this data to our server.